Hi, I'm Sam Coffee with Custom Wildlife Mounts and Outfitting. Today we're shooting a short film to kind of prepare the hunter how to properly choose a taxidermist instead of just price shopping and going with whoever's the cheapest guy. One of the most common mistakes with taxidermy is a guy picking up the phone, he's killed his deer and he calls around and he gets a price and he calls several taxidermists. And he'll get prices all over the board from two seventy five to five and six hundred dollars. And immediately the hunter goes, Well the guy at two seventy five is giving me a better deal. I did the same thing. I'm as guilty as anybody and that's what got me into the taxidermy industry. This deer right here was at the time the largest deer that I'd ever shot and was a real trophy to me. Um, I got it home and I thought, man, my deer looks great. Look at these horns. Look at it, it, it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. But over time, as I got looking into the deer more, I started noticing the deer start deteriorating. And that's what prompted me to get into this industry. Now, if you come over to this deer, you can see a lot of detail. Pretty ears, nice coloration behind. The color blends are good. Uh, the details into the nose, the mouth is tucked properly. But you can see a lot of difference. The biggest difference between one taxidermist and another's price is all based off three relative things. Cost of material, experience, and labor. The amount of time that the taxidermist put in each individual mount. A small list of questions to ask your taxidermist before you choose to do business with them should consist of things like, how do you further your education? How do you preserve your hides? Can you show me examples of the material that you're going to be using in my deer? And do you mind to give me some references so that I can call around and ask about turnaround time, cost effectiveness, mount over a few years if they held up or deteriorated? When talking about experience level in your tax service, that's, that's a very important question because a young inexperienced taxidermist is only maybe going to give you a few options as far as your mount's concerned, as far as your poses, maybe a left turn or right turn. But a more advanced taxidermist will kind of let you design your mount. Tanning is the number one way that a taxidermist can save money and provide you with a mount at a considerably less price than the next guy. But let's talk about why we want a tan skin versus a dry preserve. Have you ever seen an old mount that's been done for 15, 20 years that's kind of got a yellow appearance? Then that's probably because it was dry preserved. A dry preserve skin is here. And a tan skin is here. Now a tan skin is a finished product and it's not seeking moisture and it's a finished hide. And a dry preserve skin is just a hide that's been dried, that, dried out and put over the form. Now, folks, what you're not going to believe is that this hide here and this hide here is off of the very same deer in seven years. So that goes into the longevity of your mount. If you've got a dry preserved hide, you're looking at five to ten years life before you start seeing a noticeable difference in your deer. When you have a tanned hide, you're talking a life of 25 plus years for a deer that's going to last forever. Number one, I suggest taking it to a processor who's probably going to know how to take cape your deer out for you. Or at least call a friend that's going to know how to do that. One of the most common mistakes that I see as a taxidermist is people bring me in a deer that they want a shoulder mount on, but they only bring me the skin back on the neck. So always make sure that you bring plenty of skin because we can always cut it off. We can't necessarily put it back on. The second biggest mistake I see people do is bring me a deer in on ice. Folks, ice melts and it turns to water. Water is a breeding ground for bacteria, which makes hair slip on deer. Try to keep your deer as cool as possible, out of water, and get it to either the freezer or to your taxidermist as soon as possible. As you can see in taxidermy, you've got many options. It's going in your house. So make sure you also choose a taxidermist who is willing to decorate your trophy to go in your house, not just try to sell you something that he wants to mount in his shop. Also, check us out on Facebook at Custom Wildlife Mounts. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have, and you can look through our galleries to see examples of our work.